closer. Yes. Okay. How do you feel? How do you feel about the pattern? Like, let's get in. Let's talk about it. Cheers. Cheers. I can't like get up close because I'm afraid I'm gonna dump chai on top of my keyboard. <laughs> I'm Coco. I'm Marika. And we are two friends who like to knit. We're going to talk about it. This podcast is called Knits All Right. Mm -hmm. I'm in LA. And I'm in Albuquerque. And it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, work has been a little crazy, so not much time to edit the previous episode. So it's been a while since that's come out. Not a lot of time to record a new episode and not a lot of time at least for me, to uh, knit. <laughs> I just don't, well, it was, I had a good run where I thought like, oh, we're going to be on it. We're going to be on top of it. And it has not worked out, but we talked about some good things in that last one. So, it's, you know, hopefully I posted it. And now we have a light updates. So I'm hoping this won't be a long one. Yeah, it should be pretty, pretty fast. Yeah. Do you have any finished objects? I am wearing one right now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is the Chillin' Out sweater by Irene Lynn. Um, it's in Wool in the Gang's Feeling Good yarn, which is an alpaca merino nylon blend. Um, so yeah, finished it. It's like, it's big, it's cozy, it's really fluffy. Um, so not, not weather appropriate for the current climate right now, but I was like, I'm wearing it anyway. <laughs> so you can see, you know, it's it, got a little split hem here. Nice. A little longer in the back. So, you know, pretty square. I wore it over some leggings the other day. It was nice. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's going to be the preferred combination? Leggings. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think it's a good sweater for like leggings or jeans. Um, and then, you know, you can, uh, I just have like a sundress on underneath it now, or, you know, I had a t-shirt on under it the other day. So it seems to be pretty, pretty versatile. You were, so you're still finding time to wear it? You wore it the other day? Um, just around the house. Around the house. Oh, yeah. so it, oh no, no, no. This net, this this outfit does not leave the house. <laughs> Too hot. Um, okay. Although we're not a chilling out sweater. Yeah, um, we're not nearly as hot in New Mexico as other places currently. But it was like ninety the other day outside, so way too warm for this. <laughs> right, but I wouldn't put it past you to wear corduroy and wool. <laughs> Um, it looks great. I think it's a triumph. I think again, like I've never seen you knit one faster. Part mm -hmm. of that is like, I didn't see much of it in progress. <laughs> it was just suddenly came into being, but I'm glad you got, I didn't know you were going to be wearing that today. So we got the like blush notes. Yeah. Before. Blush and bashful part two. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I did make a few adjustments to the pattern. Like I made it, um, long, uh, I think two to three inches longer than what the pattern calls for. Um, and then I did not follow the directions properly for the cuffs, but you can tell. So the, the decrease here, um, you were supposed to maintain the rib pattern mm -hmm. and I just did a straight knit, but You'll never know. <laughs> no, it looks great. It looks fantastic. I think it's great. And as usually happens, once you finish something, I'm like, I'm going to have to put that on my list of ones that I'm going to make for myself. Yeah, I do have enough. So it used nine, nine balls of the, of this mineral pink color. And that was because I added length to it. I think the pattern itself calls for eight balls, but I think, so I think if I had done it to the pattern specifications, I would have been fine with eight. Um, and then less than one ball of this, I think it's Curacao blue. Um, but as I mentioned before, I had bought eight balls of each of these colors and the lipstick red to swatch for the 
bell cardi. Um, so I do have seven and a half balls of this blue left. And I was like, well, what if I just make one in blue? <laughs> and then I only have to buy one ball of uh, a contrasting color. Right. Do you think you would do it? I think I might. The blue is this it's coming up is very navy right mm -hmm. now, but it is not. It is very much like more of a teal. I don't know if you can tell it's, this, this camera doesn't like blue, yeah. um, but it's, it's a much, it's much more of a teal color, not so much a Navy. And I do, I do love a teal. <laughs> yeah. I think it's great. Well done. Thank you. And then do you have any finished objects? I do not have any finished objects, but what I'm wearing, I'm wearing the rocket tee by Tannis fiber arts. And, um, I made this one out of Chelsea Lux yarn. I should have, it was a kit that I bought to make a birds of a feather shawl and just decided I didn't want to make the shawl. So uh, it's, um, I just broke apart the kit and made this, but it is, it's great. But since this is mohair and it's a um, cashmere nylon merino, it's very warm, so I can't actually wear it um, in the heat of summer. It's more like a fall t-shirt for me, but it's a, uh, the sun hasn't gotten quite high today. So I figured like, I still got a little time I can put it on. Um, and I don't, I don't think it's, I've worn it as much as like my ranunculus on the podcast. So I was like, I'll bring it out. We'll see how it happens. Uh, but yeah, it's great. I do have one more finished object. It's not in the room with me, but the Helen tank. I think I finished since the last time we um, met. Yeah. I can go grab it if we want. Yeah, I'll press pause. All right, pause. <laughs> All right, so the Helen tank. Yes, you did this with your mystery yarn that you got as a gift. Yeah, my cousins gave me four balls of yarn for, um, Christmas one year, a couple years back now. Um, and it was the Cascade Fiber Bentley. Yes. And so they gave me a ball of each color, <laughs> which are represented in this shirt now. Um, so it was not the it was not the weight yarn I was supposed to use. So I really kind of like mm, with the gauge. Um, so this is actually like the extra, extra small, but it is still big. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, it's fun. I, uh, we posted on, in our, on our Instagram account, yeah. um, with my crazy frilly shirt and, you know, my, my that full extra to, outfit. You were trying to explain to me that that was like your vision. And I was mm -hmm. like, I can't wait to see it. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the vision? It was fully realized. All right. Yeah. So the, are you going to wear it to Christmas? So you can be like, look guys, remember yeah. you the yarn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll see if they remember. You should be like, Do you guys, I finally used it. But be yeah, this is also, um, I guess I could wear it in the summer. Like the armholes are pretty, they, it, picking up and doing the ribbing on the, um, like you can see I got a little bit of a wrinkle there, um, but for the most part, it really helped. Cause like when I first finished it and I put it on, I was like, this thing is huge. Um, so this definitely helped a lot with the structure, um, but it is still pretty big, you know, like the armhole comes, you know, like here-ish. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but Wait, yeah. Could I do like a, just a white t-shirt underneath? Yeah, yeah. Or a black t-shirt mm -hmm. or a blue t-shirt or an orange t-shirt <laughs> or a yellow t-shirt. Like the possibilities are endless, red. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that one's finally done and off the list. I'm so excited. And that one too is one where I'm like, I think it's on my list now. I think my color choices would be different, but it's definitely mm -hmm. on my list. Yeah, and I think it's a good way to use, to use up stash yarn too, because you don't need a crazy amount of any one color. You know, like I think, all of these in the pattern, all of these were supposed to be the same, the arms and the collar are supposed to be the same color, mm -hmm. but you know, I didn't have quite enough. 
I didn't have enough orange to do an armhole. So I just made this one blue. And then um, to have all four colors on the same side, you know, I did one part of this one black and the other part yellow. So. I think it's great. <laughs> and I can't wait to see how you continue to style that one. I'm gonna see new and inventive outfits. <laughs> so yeah, those are all my finished objects. See, for not being like, oh, I didn't do much. You <laughs> got two done. I mean, we have had like a month and a half, but. <laughs> I got nothing done. <laughs> Well, you, you, you started some stuff too. I have been, yeah, I'm continuing the chaotic thing where I'm, I'm working on too many things and not getting anything done. I'm lacking focus. So let's go to work in progress. All right. Um, okay, first off, I am continuing on the Sunday, no, Friday tea by Petite Knit, which I showed last time. I finished the body. But speaking of losing focus, I um, forgot to go down to the smaller needle for the ribbing. So what's happening is like, it's flaring out at the bottom and it's just too big. So I'm gonna have to go back and fix it. But I am to the ribbing on one of the sleeves and I have to do the ribbing on a size one, which unfortunately, means I have to use like a lace cord for my interchangeable needles. So not only did I have to change the needle tips, I had to change the cord for this. And um, I am realizing now if I do the body ribbing, I don't have a lace cord long enough. This is, this is mm -hmm. as big as the cord is that I have. So didn't think about that until just this moment. Hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do with about that. Uh, so that's where this is. We're all the way done with one sleeve. I'll do the other sleeve and then I've got to readdress how I'm going to, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to fix it or not. It's a two, I, I did the other two the same as this. And, and how did you bind off with that? I bound off with a larger needle. I went up like two needle sizes just so it wasn't tight. I, I wonder if that. you needed to, I wonder if you could just go back and bind off in pattern. Yeah, and maybe like not have gone up two needle sizes, maybe just. Yeah, and that would, that might help combat the flaring. Yeah, because the, I don't know, it's so busy. You might, it might not matter that it doesn't, look tighter. I don't know. I, yeah. Or I don't know with blocking it too. Could you like combat that flare? Like, cause it's not like a crazy flare. Like, could you kind of just bring the, you know, crunch the ribbing in a little bit? Yeah. I, maybe I'm also fully planning to, uh, wash and dry this. Mm, okay. Well. All right. Well then maybe that's not an option. <laughs> and I'm not sure what this, uh, the, the reclaimed, uh, cotton, is gonna be fine. I fully expect that this sweater was treated unkindly for many years. Um, so I think it's it's not gonna shrink or anything like that. I am a little worried about the, um, the merino that I used here. It's a soft merino, but I'm a little worried that if I wash and dry it, like, are these gonna felt? Are they gonna shrink to the point that it would be a problem? It'll look like a smocked top or something at that point. Maybe. <laughs> So I'm being cavalier, but I have my reservations. Like maybe I shouldn't be so cavalier, but we'll see once it's done. I love this pattern so much. I want like, I don't want to keep knitting it, but I want everything in it. Yeah, no, it looks, it looks great. And I'm still amazed at how much that black stripe pops. Yeah. Against that like really busy yarn. I didn't think you'd get that, that definition. It's great. So I'm loving it. I'm trying to stay mildly dedicated, but it's been a slog. The body really started to get to me. The sleeves are going better though. So that's my first work in progress. All right. I've only got one. <laughs> then, okay, I'll uh, one more and then you can show yours. Okay. 
Um, I really quick, I'm doing the half and half triangle wrap. And this is just to show that it's progressing. It's not exciting. But I have gotten I'm almost done, I think, with one ball. And I think each side is like three balls. Mm. So that's fun. It's cute. Mm -hmm. And this is the the pink is reclaimed from your uh Silpola. Yeah, I was like, it starts with an S, but I don't remember how the rest of it goes. Yeah, this is a Madeline Tosh, Tosh light. And I can't remember the colorway, but it's just a, a pinky color with like flecks of black in it. So it's very variegated. So it feels fun as far as like knitting it up. You get to see like little pops of orange and little things of like fuchsia. So that's where the fun is. But like I said before, it's just generally knitting it at night and um, I'm going to purchase the Pearl Soho uh, linen quill. No, is that it? Maybe. The one that it calls for in the pattern. I can't remember which one it is exactly, but the one that has, it has linen in it. So I'm gonna purchase that one probably this week. So hopefully we'll be getting to the point where I can um, show you something different other than just this swath of pink. Mm -hmm. But this one is actually bringing me a lot of joy in the, like the stressful time. Oh, that's good. It's just nice to like feel meditative. And uh, I had my doubts. I really like doubted everyone who was doing it. I was like, oh, just bandwagoning. And then I started it and I was like, you know what? Bandwagons exist for a, we a reason. Like if everyone agrees that it's good, maybe it's good. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been great for my mental well-being to do this at the end of the night. Nice. So I'm progressing a lot more than I expected. Mm -hmm. All right, your turn. Um, so last episode, we were starting Junko in June. <laughs> So yeah. we both embarked for the first time on the same pattern at the, relatively the same time, mm -hmm. um, which was the bouquet sweater. Yeah. Both have very different approaches to it. <laughs> um, so mine is, uh, I'll show you where I'm at. Didn't make it very far. <laughs> I'll show mine at the same time. I have okay. it here. Let me spread it out on my needle so you can see it. I know I'm trying to like spread mine out, but my cord's too short. So I'm like, don't fall off the needle. Okay, are we ready? Ready. Let's go. <laughs> Yours is so fuzzy. <laughs> so yeah, so that's, uh, I'm trying to like spread it out so you can see it more. Um, that's where we're at currently. How do you feel? Like, I just want to talk about yours. How do you feel about this process? Um, it's it closer. Yes. Okay. How do you feel? How do you feel about the pattern? Like, let's get in. Let's talk about it. So I think the pattern is good. I'm a little, I was a little worried because it's like, it's like a one size pattern Yeah. and the finished chest measurements would give me like zero ease. Um, and so, and it's not supposed to be like a super tight sweater, you know, it's supposed to be kind of like a boxy hanging sweater. So I have been knitting, like trying to consciously knit very loose. Um, so that I get some room in blocking um, to possibly like increase those measurements a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then also because it is color work and there are these really long floats. Yes. Um, you know, I have been trying to, um, you know, really try and keep those generous. Yeah. I got these like, I'm not doing well with my float management here. Like this is almost like a tripping hazard. You know what I mean? Right. Well, I mean, mine are similar. So like, you know, if we look at my guy here, you know, we're not doing much better. I don't know how, I, I don't know what the right way is. You know, what are we supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. Because 
I catch them every now and then, but sometimes I forget. And then I end up with like this long situation here. Yeah. And so what I was, you know, we talked, I don't, I don't know. I don't think it was on the podcast. We talked some other time. Um, and, uh, you know, we're discussing our different approaches and I had just been letting the float go the whole time to start, yeah. but then you were like, Oh, I'm catching it every like nine stitches or so. And I was like, Oh, that's a good idea. That's probably better than what I'm doing. So then I started doing that. So every like, you know, it depends. It's every nine, it's every 15, it's something like that. But there are some times where there's stretches of like 40 stitches, you know, where you're not bringing that other color in. Um, like here, I ended up catching it kind of in the same spot over and over. Uh -huh. And now like you can see the background color through the top. And yeah. So that's why I started varying mine. Cause I yeah. was starting to see that like yellow poke through. Um, and because I'm knitting so, so loosely, um, but I'm, but I'm thinking like once I block it and, you know, you can kind of like pull, I think you can probably pull that a little tighter. So it goes more towards the back when you, block. Yeah. but I don't know, it's still, I'm very unsure. Me too. I feel like it's really going to be determined to when I get to where you separate for the arms and I can really like put it on, put it on for the yeah. first time and see how it goes. The other thing is, is I do really love the color contrast. Yeah. Uh, the color combination I've got going on. Um, and I really love how this yarn is, you know, really kind of looks really plump and full. Yeah. When you're knitting it, my issue is when you're doing the floats, it looks really thin. Well, that one is Brooklyn Tweed, right? Mm -hmm. Br Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. Yeah. I, it's going to expand once it starts to soak up the water. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So my other thing is, is like, yeah, I think it's like one, the fir first test will be try it on before you separate, before I separate for the, for the arms and really make sure that like, it's actually going to fit. Um, Cause it's a mystery right now. Um, two is then once it's done blocking it to see if those like embroidery style front floats fill in. Yeah. Cause like, I don't like the look of them right now. And so what it might mean if they don't fill in enough is that I'm going to have to go in and actually embroider strands in between all of those to fill them all in, which would yeah. be a lot of extra work. Yeah. Um, so mine looks like this and it's not going to fill anymore. Mm. Like they're, mine isn't going to expand mm -hmm. and I've got weird ones like this one where I've got you know, maybe it's too loose. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I don't mind it. Like this is very successful. I feel like this one here. Yeah. But it's always going to look like a bit, it's going to look stranded. Mm -hmm. Whereas the black color I have, I think it's going to expand. I think it's going to mm -hmm. fill in. So maybe the parts I showed you before where you can see the yellow poking through because I'm catching my floats. I'm hopeful that this body is going to expand over top of it and I won't be able to see it but this green one I don't think it's ever going to get better mine is going to be like this but I don't mind it mm -hmm. kind of I'm I'm so in love with my color combination yeah no it's really good but I think yours too because like part of the reason I don't like this dreaminess on mine is that you because of the feathers come in this isn't as solid yeah. you lose the definition of this pattern. So it's not as successful. Whereas yours, it's such a good contrast between the green and the black that even if it's not like a solid piece mm -hmm. with the strands, you, it still gives you a very clear um, idea of the design. Yeah. Maybe cutting, like how you said, you might have to like cut back the feathers mm -hmm. in those areas. Maybe that would be the first thing to do because it would be less work than trying to over embroider yeah what I'm trying to do now like because I'm I'm learning how to work with the feather too as I go because it's like it doesn't it, it the feather is slowing me down a lot um just because you have to manage the feathers as you knit so it's like every five to seven stitches you hit a feather um and then you know depending on where I'm at in the color chart like if I'm doing stranded if I'm doing the stranded stuff, like carrying the color in front, then I'll try and knit the feathers to the back. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then, but then if I'm just doing the blue areas, then I'll try Then I have to like pull the feathers to the front. And then sometimes it doesn't like, I'll try and hold them to the front and knit. And sometimes that helps, but sometimes they get caught in the stitches. So then I have to stop and like pick out the feathers. And so it's definitely, I feel like I probably would be two to three times further along if I wasn't knitting with the feathers. So it's definitely slowing me down, but I am kind of loving the chaos of it like the chaotic look like it's just it's, yes. it's a lot it's, it's this <laughs> yeah it's no words it's just this <laughs> which is what I always go for in my knits yeah totally um how do you feel about so I'm struggling with the the pattern is not memorizable every line is different something new is going on and there's only, right, there's only like three repeats around. Yeah, in the yoke, yeah. Which is not enough time for me to memorize a line. Mm. That pretty much means like you do it once, you test it to see if you memorized it. And then this, the third time you got it or you didn't. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's not enough. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> it is very, like, I have to be a lot. I, I guess having done the nightingale, Yes. With that cable chart, like that's not something you can, you can kind of get a feel for it, but it really isn't something you can memorize. Like you are checking in every row. Um, that one doesn't have any repeats. So it's like, you just do the row and then you get, um, I guess when you go, since, since it's knit flat, when you get to do the pearl side, the wrong side, you can, you kind of have, you don't really have to check the chart for that because you have the roadmap roadmap of the cable line you just did on the knit side, but it is, you are very much like, I got to, I'm, I'm in this chart. I, I live or die by this chart. Yeah. And very much the same with this, you know, like I'll, it, I'm trying to watch a show, but then I've got like my little tablet up with the like zoomed in color chart. Yes. And I'm like, okay, I know I can knit 10 stitches. And then I got to look at the chart again. And then I'm like, okay, now I know what I'm doing for the next 10 stitches. And then I got to look at the chart again. So it's not, uh, I think also why it's going slower is that it's not as, I can't knit it as casually as I can other stuff. Right. So what's your pairing as far as like, what are you able to do at the same time? Because that's what I'm struggling. I feel like I'm making the choice between like, do I work on this uh -huh. or do I enjoy the, the entertainment content I would like to enjoy and not work on the, the knit. So what are you yeah. doing with it? So I can't watch any of my subtitled shows. Those are off the table. <laughs> it's like you either got to read subtitles or you got to knit this thing. You cannot do both. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, something that I don't feel like needs a lot of, uh, isn't going to have a lot of visual cues. In yeah. The show. Um, so no, no visual gags, no comedy that has visual gags. Mm -hmm. Can't watch a, can't watch drag race because it's a visual medium yeah um or you know you can like or it's like if i because i think i was knitting when i was watching all stars the other night but i think what i did is it was like while they're talking yeah you know i can knit but then once it hits like once the runway or like the challenge happens you're like okay taking a break we're gonna i um i think it would be great audiobook but i'm having a, a struggle getting an audiobook that I like am invested in mm. the current choices I have right now I'm not like I'm just not there and so I'm very much struggling with like what am I supposed to pair with this mm -hmm. from an entertainment perspective which is causing me to not work on it because mm. I'm like I don't know what like I want something else to be going on yeah so yeah, I'm struggling with that. Mm -hmm. And I'm also, yeah, I'm also struggling with like the slow progression um, because I've handicapped myself in multiple ways on this, but like, because this guy went so fast and was just like, boom, 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 we're good. Um, I was like, oh yeah, a month, sounds great. And then it's like taken me six weeks to do 20 rows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm definitely feeling that. And I thought a lot of it was like me bouncing around, but then I realized also like I'm choosing not to work on it a lot of the time because I'm like, 
I have to have the chart up, which means I can't use, like usually I use my tablet to watch uh, knitting podcasts on YouTube and I can't do that and have the chart up. And I'm not gonna pull this chart up on my phone because then I would go blind. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm struggling with that. But I think yours is so fantastic. I cannot wait to see it grow. <laughs> because it is wild and perfect yeah I feel the same way about yours I'm like oh my god it's such a good color combo oh I'm like do I need to make another one that has a neon, a like, neon yes. I'm not sure I would make one that has feathers but <laughs> <laughs> I like like the idea of it the navy with that kind of burnt orangey not quite orange not quite yellow is it feels very classic. And then I feel like you just flipped it by adding in this like unconventional material. So I think I would, if I made another one, I would be tempted to do a navy with the like, with that color, but I, I wouldn't do it with feathers. <laughs> I'm just not there yet. Yeah, not full chaos. <laughs> uh, I only have one more thing. Okay. I have a blanket that Marika had left me this yarn, um, a blanket that didn't work out for her. Uh -huh. And then I was like, yeah, sure. Give me whatever yarn you want. And then I kind of had a little panic attack about how big my stash is right now. So for some reason, because this was like, I don't know, it feels large. It feels like a lot to contend with. I just zeroed in on it and I was like, I have to get, I have to do something with this right now. <laughs> so with no real plan, I started to do this. Um, it's called the hmm, take a sunrise, take in a sunrise, sunshine. It's I, hey, I put the thing down so oh. you'll see what it's actually called. <laughs> uh, it has something about the sun in it and it's because, and I don't know if you can see it. There are these like circle shaped pearl sections and then the rest is stock in it. And it's almost unseeable with this like confetti. You can kind of, in, in real life, you can kind of see it because um, it's like in relief, mm. but you, I don't think you're even gonna be able to see it on this on the screen here. And it's got all this puckering going on, but it doesn't matter. This is going to be a blanket and it's going to go back to Marika <laughs> to give to whomever she wants. <laughs> and I'm pretty much just like, you have to leave my stash. That's all that's happening here. <laughs> just like, you have to go. You don't have to stay here, but, or you can't, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. That's mm -hmm. how I feel about this yarn right now. So I've been, I was pretty successful at staying committed to it. And then like, you know, wheels came off and I just didn't care about working on it anymore. So after I got to this point about three weeks, two weeks ago, I did all of this in like a week and then I put it down and I haven't touched it again. So at some point I need to make an effort to finish this up so that it can go to Marika and she can do what she will with it. <laughs> But that's it. The, I, the pattern said that the puckering was going to happen and that it should flatten out when you um, wash it. And this is a, an acrylic. So mm -hmm. I'm going to throw it in the washing machine, throw it in the dryer and see what happens. Yeah. Um, so very friendly to whomever you want to give it to. But all right. There you go. Yeah. Um, oh, I was thinking I brought it in the um, in my exploration of my local resources here. Um, I went up to Santa Fe the other day because I found this shop that's like sewing and knitting. They're called um, Acer um, and checked them out and they were like H-A-C-E-R. Uh -huh. So in Spanish that means to make. Yeah. So uh, that's cute. I yeah. love the name. So um, I went up there and they had like a little yarn section and they had um the brooklyn tweed shelter so i got another skein of the hayloft um for the 
bouquet. Um, and they had all of these other yarns that I hadn't used or seen before. Um, but I was like, I cannot buy anything without a plan. So I just saw a bunch of like really cool stuff. And I'm like, all right, now I got to figure out what I can make that will use these things and go back okay. and buy it. But did they had, huh? Did you make that plan on the spot so that you could buy something or were you like, no, I have to come back? No, I have to come back. Oh, look at you. Yeah. Uh, but what I did do and what I did have a plan for, and the reason I went there in the first place was, um, for the, uh, I bought this pattern from Sew House 7 a while back for the Burnside bib overalls. And I had bought this linen that was like, um, kind of like a black and tan linen. Um, and I wasn't feeling it for the overalls and then I saw this fabric Not from tan linen you mean like it had stripes in it no, no no it was like it was like two colors like woven you know how like linen when you see the weave yeah and like you have like the base color and then there's like the other color and it's kind of like but it didn't look like this it's no not it, busy. it did kind of look like that okay I don't think I've seen this going mm -hmm. on Moving on. Um, but anyway, I wasn't feeling that for the Burnside bib. And then when I was looking up like local resources and found this store and poking around their website, I saw this like really cool chambray that has these fluorescent like neon flecks in it. Yeah. And I was like, like, that would be perfect for the overalls. So I went up and got this from there. And they had like all these great fabrics and they had a bunch of indie patterns they had all the yarn stuff they had embroidery stuff and then I also got um I got some muslin and some elastic too but that's not exciting but I got these little labels that says this is the back because every time I try and wear my rbg sweater I have no idea which side is the front and which side is the back so I'm like now I will know and I don't spend like 10 minutes being like I don't, mm, mm, mm. Like I always judge it by the, by where I fixed the holes, where I picked up for the arms. And yeah. so I'm always like, which one has the bigger holes? That one's going in the back. <laughs> so now this will help expedite me getting dressed in that sweater. But it was a really great, really great store. And the woman, um, I think she was the owner who checked me out. She was like, gave me her card and was like, if you have any questions as you work through the pattern or use any of these materials, like feel free to email me. And I was like, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So highly recommend. And they do have an online store. And yeah, them online. the name and location again? Uh, Acer. Um, and they are off of, I think, um, Guadalupe in Santa Fe, kind of near the Palace of the Governors. Nice. Yeah. Um, I don't think we're talking about sewing, but I showed you my decisions there. So I'm supposed to cut it out this weekend <laughs> because it's just been sitting on my table. Yeah, I finally got my zipper foot for my machine. And so I'm gonna, now I can do the piping on my pajamas to finish those up. All right, anything else for the pod? I think that's it. Keep it snappy. It's a better yeah. chance that I'll be able to edit it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers. Cheers. Happy, Happy knitting. knitting. <laughs>